Paul again. This is a Techniques 1500 series open reel tape deck. This is actually a 1520. Any deck with this head arrangement, this is two sets of heads, double pinch rollers, it's really neat, but a pain to work on. Any deck like this tends to suffer from a problem with these regulator arms bouncing. This one's half fixed. Going from play to stop, not so bad. See how that one rocked back and this one didn't? They were both rocking back before I fixed one reel table. Fast forward to stop. This one stayed put, this one jumped up. When they jump all the way up, it turns the motor off. Very frustrating. The brakes on these are not very strong, but they've got DC motors and they use reverse braking. The brakes only come on at the last second. But if they don't come on, when the motor stops, these pull the tape slack. So this one's working nicely, but this arm still has to be done. And I'll give you a quick look here in just a second of what has to be done. You can't get parts for these. The brake shoes you can get to, clean them with a toothbrush, clean the rim of the motor, make sure that both of them feel about the same. They never have tight brakes. They're always kind of iffy. It's supposed to turn easier in one direction than the other. But the key is this damper that keeps those arms from bouncing when you stop the tape. That one stayed put, that one didn't. There we go. These are a pain to work on because everything's hard to get to. Okay, if you look right in here, there's a bellows on that arm rubber corrugated kind of like an accordion and this one's been fixed it's got two tiny little holes in this backing plate to let the air in and out to give it a cushioning effect the bellows is not leaking it's not rotted but there's a little rubber washer inside the bellows held in place by the screw that holds this together that acts as a one-way valve and that rubber is uh, getting old and drooping a little bit and it lets air move out too fast that's why it doesn't damp if you take them apart you take them out we may have to cover this again in a minute take them out take them apart take the screw out flip the little rubber washer over and put it back they work got a wire running against the well, yeah, I had this whole thing out yesterday, and there's wires everywhere. And they tell you, frankly, in the book, that you got to take all this stuff out to work on it, which is a nuisance. You get that out and down, and the motor has three screws. Get around there. I'll show you where the brakes are. I thought, uh, I got the service manual and it says nothing about these bellows. Not a word. But the brakes, they go into great detail. Oh, you do this, you do that. Set them so many uh, millimeters and so much pressure. And they still don't grab. Well, they're not supposed to. These DC motors, they put them in braking mode to slow the tape down. Works beautifully. But at the last second, these brakes come on to lock it down and it counts on those dampers to keep those arms from overcompensating. Okay. Let me cut... Uh, uh, where's my wire cutters? There we are. Things full of tie wraps. There we are. Get the motor out of the way. And there's the brake mechanism, two screws, it comes out. You take it apart, you clean these with a toothbrush, make sure they're, they're, they're not caked up. Take the rim of the motor, clean it with uh, 
a solvent, I used acetone to make sure there's no dust on it, the brake still don't grab. But what you gotta do is get in here and get this sub-assembly out. It's not as bad as it looks once you get the stuff out of the way. I love the way they use one screw and they tab the other end to something. There's two screws that hold this end of the bellows and there's a nylon thing in my way. I'll get there in a second. Okay, and you have to push the bellows over to get the other screw. I thought the bellows were probably cracked. I was surprised to get them apart and they weren't. Come on out of there. I hate chasing screws. In the front of the bellows, there's a little plate down there hooked to the arm. So get a hold of the arm so you can put a little pressure on it, not too much. Come on, screws, pop. There's one. And this actually comes out pretty easily. I think there's a spring I've got to disconnect before we go any further. Let me get the screws out. The other one's got to come loose. There we go. And gotcha. Okay, that will now lift out. But let me sit down here for a minute. I think there's a screw, a spring, excuse me, a spring on the back side of this. Yes, right there, and they are glued on, so you've kind of got to get a hold of the loop, if you can find it, where's my pick, here we go, spring hook, best thing ever invented, get in there and find the hook, or the loop, and pull that spring loose, and they're kind of fragile. That one just stretched instead of coming loose. But we can fix that later. In fact, the springs are probably overrated. I think it works better without one of them. I move your camera just a little bit so I can see where that last wire is. Get in there. I don't have the depth of vision I used to have. It's hard to see in the things. There we are. All right. Now we're loose. This lifts out. Not that bad. And here is the key. You peel this off gently. It's not glued, it's just held on there where there's a little lip. You get there and the bellows is okay. And you go up here. Here's, here's a little rubber washer that forms a one-way valve. And I'll show you where the little holes are here in a second. There's two little holes. One there and one further in. This one's always exposed, in or out. The other one is one way based on this. But you see how that rubber's curling? Well, you can take that off and you have to watch. There's a little spacer in here that it will not work without. I found that out the hard way. Take the screw out. There's a little spacer that needs to stay in that plastic part. Take this off, watch that other washer. Kind of wipe it off, get the dust off of it, and flip it over. You have to watch this way it came off to make sure you reverse it when you put it back on there. You can kind of see it kind of gets a cup shape to it. And put it back on, and now that has to line up with all the little recesses. Wait a minute, that was right. There. Come 
Let to go have my hands done. I'm getting too shaky. Been doing this too long. All right, there you go. The little holes can be anywhere. It really doesn't matter. But to get it back on there, start slipping it back on. The hardest part is getting it where it's under this bracket. If you rotate it in the same direction that the screw turns, you can get that part exposed so that you can pull on it and get it to go all the way around. If you turn the little disc the other way, the screw will come unscrewed and you have to start all over again. There we are. One more time. Ah, there we go. And of course, there's, it has to line this up so it's all oriented correctly. And I'm not going to put it back in there because we've seen that one of them works. Now, you've got resistance. You can feel it. Before this, it was just like ping pong, ping pong, you know, like an accordion. No resistance. Now, you feel it. And it will keep those arms from bouncing when the tape stops and they'll stay in the middle where they have to be for the machine to restart. Because right here is a micro switch that those arms have to uh, be off of. Let me see, off of, on. I forget which way they have to go. Anyway, that's what stops the machine. And if those switches are trip, you go from stop to play, it won't move until you tighten the tape manually. Doing this will stop it from doing that. It will break smoothly and quietly, and when it stops and the brakes click on, the tape will still be tight, and those arms will not be at their extreme, and you can just hit play and go right on listening to music. So, I've not seen anybody yet point this problem out, so I'm going to be the first. And it's a and good thing to know, too. If you own these machines and you love your, these machines and your tape, it's very frustrating that those reels keep going slack, and you had to get up and tighten them again, or worry about it damaging your tape because it doesn't break properly. And it's not the brakes. The brakes don't do much on this stack. The dynamic braking of the motors handles the tension, but at the very end, you hear a click, those brakes come on and they're just barely important at all. But if these arms bounce, the tape slacks. Uh, sometimes the tape will drop its loop like this. Most of the time it just lets it go just enough that it trips the switches. But this will solve that problem and I don't think anybody's thought of it yet. But I thought there's got to be something, and sure enough, there is a fix. So, that's my tip for the day. And a good tip it is, Paul. I think so. Hope it saves somebody some trouble. And all the people out there that think their decks are fixed, maybe they need to do this. It could be better. Yeah. It could be better. So, that's it for today. Well, thank you, Paul. You're welcome. <laughs>